Okay, step number four, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be gluing together our panels that we've already been making, step one, two, and three, and we're also going to start on our front and our back of our storage chest as well, because these ones right now are just the left and the right ends of our storage chest. We're going to start on the front and the back now. It says on your paper, it says get your two end panels from the previous planner procedure, we've got those, and then glue these together by only putting glue on the ends of the rails. This will allow the panel to float, which allows for expansion and contraction of the panel. When we're gluing this together, we want to make sure absolutely we do not just glue the entire thing together. We're only putting glue where the rail and the style meet together, just on that small end of that rail here, same thing right here, a little bit up here, and a little bit up here. Do not glue the whole panel into there. And we talked about this a little bit when we glued boards together. These tend to expand and contract with the moisture in the air. If it's really humid, you take this thing somewhere in the south or somewhere with a lot of humidity in the air, this panel is actually going to expand a little bit. Then you take it somewhere dry like Utah and it starts to contract and it actually shrinks a little bit. Now it's not drastic, it's not huge, but it is going to expand and contract maybe a sixteenth of an inch, thirty-second of an inch a little bit. But if this was glued in there, and it tries to expand, it's going to end up breaking your boards. It'll actually force the boards out and, and pop them open or put a crack in there. So we want this panel actually to be fit snug, but no glue. So we're only gluing the rails and styles. This thing can move around in here if it needs to. I found the easiest way to do this, to glue it together, instead of taking the whole thing apart and then trying to put it all back together, because some of you had a hard time fitting this together, is just remove the style one style. And if you can't pull this off very well, tap it on the edge of a bench and that style will just come right off. But leave the whole thing together like this and we're only putting glue on the ends of our rails. Remember the rails are the ones that are horizontal. So we're putting a little bit of glue, a little, not a lot, up on the ends here, a little bit in the little slots. But don't put any glue on the panel. A little bit in this end over here, Again, you can spread that around if needed. Just get a little bit of glue on there. Spread that around if you need to, and then we'll get our style that we removed, and we'll put that style back on. And if you need to, remember you can, well, get that face in the correct direction. Tap on it with one of these dead blow hammers. If you need to, just kind of tap it into place. Again, all we're doing is gluing where the rail and the style meets together. We've got one side, now we're going to flip this side over, get this style off, get a little bit of tap on that, and you can just pop that right off. Put the glue. Now this way you don't have to rearrange any of your rails, you don't have to rearrange your panel. The grain direction should be the correct way. A little bit in here, it's pretty quick. I've had some students take this whole thing apart. And then when they glue it, put it back together, sometimes they put this thing together wrong. Another thing I've noticed, sometimes people put this together wrong this way, but when they put the second style back on, sometimes they line it up like this. You guys see the problem? Yep. Where one style is sticking out too far this way, and then this style is sticking out too far that way. So instead, make sure both your styles are actually lined up, flush on top, and then the little legs are both facing the same way here. Just small little things to be aware of. Just kind of tap it down into place. We're going to be throwing some clamps on here in a second. I'm going to quickly get my other one ready to go. So again, just take off the style. If you need to, just tap that, pop that off. A little bit of glue. If you put too much glue on here, it's going to squeeze out everywhere. And it's a nightmare to get off later. So a little bit of glue in the slot. And we'll fit those together. style back on here. Things should fit. You got to be careful when you're putting these back together. If you hit them too hard or force it, it might crack the wood there. Just kind of tap on it for now. And we'll be able to get that all better. Last one. Pop that style off. A little bit of glue. And again, I can't stress this enough, do not glue your panel. 
inside there. Let this thing just be dry, nothing on the edge there. We want that to be able to move around if needed. Get our style back on. Now when you're clamping this, you can just clamp each one individually. Easier way that I like to do is take your bar clamps here and then take both of your panels that we just put glue on. You do need to clamp it. Don't just tap it back together. It's got to have pressure. Okay, so again, I found it's easiest when you're gluing this together. Put them both in here at the same time. Obviously, we're not putting any glue on the edge where these two are meeting together, so just make sure it's glued on here. And that way, you only have to use two bar clamps to get this whole thing glued up. When you're putting pressure on it, don't crank it down as hard as you can. Just kind of go nice and slow and easy, and you'll see them fit together. Little bits of glue will squeeze out. Okay, now once you get it nice and snug, don't over tighten it, otherwise, it might pop up on you a little bit. I would recommend wipe up some of the wet glue that squeezes out everywhere, and then we'll just let this dry for at least 30 minutes off to the side. We're doing our rails and styles for the front and the back of your storage chest. And to save some time, I've already went ahead and pre-cut some of these down. It guides you through again how to cut those, go to the radial arm saw, trim the cracks, table saw, jointer, planer, all that. And I've already done all that. The only thing I didn't do fully yet was cutting them to the exact size. On the back side of our paper it says use the miter saw to cut your boards to the exact length of your front and back panel rails and styles. You need four styles, 13 and a half inch long, and four rails, 18 and a half inches long. This is where people get confused. When you did your shorter panels, the end ones, the rails were the shorter boards, correct? They were the nine inch long boards. And your styles were the longer ones, the 13 and a half. Now it's opposite. Your rails, those are the horizontal ones, those are going to be the longer boards. They're going to be 18 and a half. And your styles are going to be the shorter board. So don't go off of length on these. Now we're going off of which direction they're going, horizontal or vertical. I've already cut our, our rails. Those are 18 and a half inches long. We need four of them. And so I want to cut my styles now. I need four of them at 13 and a half. And I have my longer board, or sorry, my short boards here. And we're going to cut these 13 and a half inches long. I need four of them. Here's a little trick you can do on the miter saw to make this accurate and even because some of you have a hard time if you have to cut four boards to the exact same length it's kind of difficult to get it that exact length each time so what we want to do is we want to measure one of our boards here and get the length listed 13 and a half I'm just going to put a mark right there okay so this is just a trick you can do if you'd like and you can go ahead and get that set up on the miter saw here to get it cut Okay, a trick to make these all the exact same length, and you guys can do this with any other future part of your project as well. I need four boards all 13 and a half inches long. So I've got it marked. I'm going to line this up right on the miter saw where I want it to cut. Be sure you're on the correct side of the line when cutting. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a little stop block and line it up right where the end of your board sits. And we want to have that clamped on there nice and tight so it's not going to move. Just take any scrap board and you're just going to clamp that to the fence and have that so it's not going to move. Now all we have to do is take our board, slide it up against our stop block, and it's very important you hold on to this board between the blade and the stop block. Don't hold it on over here, but hold it between the blade and the, st and the stop block, and then we can just make our cut. Okay. Now this should be exactly 13 and a half inches or whatever you set your stop block to. We're good. Now I don't have to measure each of my other boards. I just take this, slide it down against my stop block. It's exactly the same length. We can cut that. Now these are both the exact same length each, 13 and a half. Now I need four of these, so I have to take my other board. Again, I can just bump it into my stop block there. Cut a hundred of these things real quick and easy without having to measuring each board individually. I 
did the same thing when I cut my rails at 18 and a half. So I guarantee that these are all the exact same length, and these ones here are all 13 and a half for my styles. It's a trick you can do. It saves a lot of time, and it's very, very accurate that way if you can get them all cut the exact same length. So I've got my rails and my styles. Now, which are which? Look on your blue papers. Are my long ones my rails, or are my long ones my styles? Now, before my long were the styles, but now my long ones are my rails. And I want you to look on your paper when you see this and label it on your boards here. Now my rails are the long ones. And I'm going to write that right on there, rails. I've had so many people mess this up because they think their long ones are now the styles, when in essence, now it's the rails are the long ones. These ones are my styles. I'm just going to write an S for style. Maybe that's faster and easier. You can write an R for rails instead of writing it all out. But label them so you know which is which. So when you take this over to the shaper table there and have to do the rail end cutter, you don't accidentally do the rail end cutter on your styles. We want to do it on the rails. Thing. We also want to mark the best face with an X. Whatever face you like the best, put your X on it. Like that one better. Do that to both rails and styles. So when you take this over to the rail end cutter, make sure it's your rails, your longer boards now, not the shorter ones. X down. And use that push stick right behind it. You guys have done this before, but I just want to make sure you're aware. Hold on to that board nice and tight, tight down, tight against that fence. You're going to run all your rails only on the rail end cutter. Flip it around, get the other end. Do that to all four of your rails. X down. Okay, after you get all four of your rails, the ends cut on the rail end cutter. Now we do our other panel, our, our other shaper here, the style cutter. It says cut both the rails and the styles. One edge, X down. So my rails and my style, we're sending these through. Remember you have this power feed that's gonna help push them through. Set it on turtle, good. Set it on turtle, turn this on. X down as you run these through. You can have someone catch for you on that side. That'll help you out. Send them all through, rails and styles. Don't forget to send your rail. X down. Come on through. Okay, once you've got them all cut, just go ahead and assemble them together in those ring patterns. This one's going to be a little bit wider than your other ones. Just a reminder, these little pieces right here on the ends of the rails, if you get that, just kind of peel that little piece off, because sometimes those get in the way when you're assembling this together. It usually just happens on the ends of your rails only. Peel those little pieces off. Then when you fit these together, you take two styles and your two rails, and they should fit together. Again, make sure that you did the correct shapers there so it fits together nice. Bring me these with your two end panels that you glued up. I need to see those that are glued and I need to see both these front and back rails and styles here all assembled together nice as our frames there. So both of them just like this and your two panels that you glued up. I need to see that for a signature. Okay, that's it. Go ahead.